day three. It's a long weekend. That's what I've been working on for three days. Haven't got as much accomplished as I would like, but uh, feel a little more rested than I was on Saturday. Because now it's holiday Monday, Labor Day actually. So we're gonna do some labor. And the goal today is to get Duke into the shop. So, because I think we are going to, um, well, I don't know if we're gonna get the, tr the engine in today. I would like to. So plan is to get it in the shop, get it prepped to put, um, do whatever I need to do in the frame to put the engine in. Maybe I'll be able to put the engine in today. Maybe not, I don't know. But the plan is, is to prep the frame so that we can stick the engine in, get it bolted up, and then I can put my cylinder packs back in. Um, reason why I'm doing it this way is just for weight of the engine for getting it back in the truck. Uh, this probably isn't a very good angle because it shows my chin. And I put on some weight this year. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's true. I have, I know. Turn the alarm off. Do, 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 do. <sighs> and here we are. So, <laughs> I got a mess. And let me tell you, when I get this mess cleaned up, it's gonna feel real nice. Got this area cleaned out. So I can put uh, a duke in here. I've got my starter on. I was gonna leave the tape on this, but I suppose I could take it off. Um, yeah, got the starter on, I got my motor mounts on, air compressors on, fuel stuff is on. Left my mess on the ground. Gonna leave the vibration dampener off. It's over there until I get it in the truck. I've got my oil cooler on oil filter. I'm a little nervous about this O-ring, but I think it should be okay. You know, in a lot of ways, I probably should have bought, well, in a lot of ways, I probably should have bought a gold kit and just rebuilt the whole thing. But I'm not using this truck enough to warrant spending $20,000, $30,000 on an engine. Yet, if it runs, if it runs enough for me to use it, win. Because the thing is, it had 7,500 hours on it. So at 7,500 hours, I don't have to break it in. I can run around town, haul a little bit of loads, play around with it, as long as it runs. If I rebuild it, not only do I have the cost of the rebuild, um, then I also have to run it on a dyno in order to break it in because I'm not gonna work it enough. And then to put it around town, it would probably do more harm to it than good. So unless I'm gonna work the truck, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, but yeah. I've got my, uh, my water hose on. I don't know what that's, water manifold? This is a water pump. That's a water manifold. This is the oil cooler. And I found, now this is the oil cooler off of Duke. I probably should have done a better job of flaking some of the flake off, but uh, eh, I just gave it a, a quick, you know, <laughs> rebuild. And um, yeah, when I... <laughs> put it back on I noticed there's some rubbed spots and this one the wire is actually rubbed you can see it right there so I'm gonna have to fix that part of me thinks I should take this sending unit off the other manifold right there um, but the other part of me is like you know what just fix the wire you know I'll use some heat shrink maybe solder it so it's good and then I still have a spare so, um, and that's the beauty is having all these spare parts. Now the parts that I can't use, um, I'm going to sell them. Well, maybe we'll make sure this thing runs first, but I was thinking about hanging on to the oil cooler, um, maybe the air compressor fan hub. Um, but yeah, the other cylinder head, I still might get that cylinder head checked out. I might just wing it. Um, but I'm gonna hang on to that. And then the other thing I was wondering is if this oil pan is reversible. I bet you it is. Cause I was wondering like, if you got a front sump versus a rear sump, does it work either way? I'm betting it does. I'm a betting man. Sorry, I'm just looking at it now. So this one, I've been using it kind of like a, a wash tub. 
so it's uh, filthy dirty and that's the the front pickup but if I look at the pan and then I come over and look at Duke's pan I've got it all cleaned up and that's the rear sump it kind of looks the same but reversed which is handy because I I bet you that cast pan is like probably two grand to buy so oh so anyways and then I'm gonna pull the crank out of this one I'm gonna pull the front rear rear <laughs> I'm gonna pull the front rear train off gear train off um, the rear bell housing because it's all good parts and basically I'm just gonna throw the block away and anything else that can be used it's going on uh, the old interweb and uh, if someone else needs parts for C13, I can hook you up. <sighs> but for now, um, I'm gonna leave that because I can kind of do that anytime. And once I get this engine out of here, <coughs> excuse me, and into the truck, life will be a little better. So we're just that much closer <sighs> to make it smoke. And also there was a bolt missing here. So I pulled a bolt out of that one and stuck there. So. Yeah, I really hope this runs because let me tell you, it's a lot of Saturdays, but it's um, eh. how you learn, right? Learn to do by doing. And when you make a mistake, you learn not to do that again. So, and part of why I'm trying to do this without the head on it, I'm trying to keep it a little bit lighter so I can use the rear hoe. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I don't have to use the bucket on the tractor and we can gently put it in. Part of me thinks I should have left the starter off um, and the oil cooler, but let's face it, that stuff's just gonna be harder to do once it's in, in the engine bay. That'd be fine. <sighs> so, and the other thing is if I do this, um, put the engine in and then put the, the head and the liner packs in, it'll be easier to torque the head bolts because then it's locked in. Don't have to worry about it falling on my head because we don't want that. Because all this rebuilding trucks is not worth it if I end up with crushed skull. I know, right? <laughs> Anyways, let's get to it. Got a spot cleaned up. So let's go air up the Duke and start trying to get him in here because I know it's going to be a proper bugger because my little tractor ain't quite got enough jam. So I might use a Super Duty to pull it because it's got brakes. Um, and the other thing, I can't pull it all the way in here because I can't cross over into the other side. Although I had thought I could clean my crap out here and then tow it, like tow it in with Andrea's Jeep. And then I could just dock the Jeep over there to finish pushing the truck there. You know, that might not be a bad idea just to help give it a little, because the Jeep is small. And then I could get it around because the one problem is you're pushing uphill. The little tractor moves it, but it, when you get down in the dip, it's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, and then you spin your, anyways. You know, if I use the Super Duty to pull up here, Super Duty, not gonna fit there. It's not gonna fit. Jeep, Jeep on the other hand, it's nice and short, so. Anyways, let's get to it.
that's better. Yeah. <sighs> really curious if this air conditioning is going to work. I touched that with the tractor. I scratched my door a little bit when it was over there, ticked me off. And that looks <sighs> not great, but might still work. So now my plan is to prep the chassis and then come in here with the backhoe use the backhoe part and go <sighs> famous last words gosh this engine's looking good though looking real good this engine looking real bad and really right at the moment i just want to make this sucker run um and you know what's really annoying i had a brake sticking and i think that was why it was so hard to move when I tried moving it last time. And because it was one of the front brakes, I know one of the back brake sticks, but uh, so I'm gonna do brakes on it, but we're gonna wait. <laughs> we're gonna wait till it runs. First, we'll get it running and then we'll do the brakes because brakes are easy. Truck brakes, hammer that out in a, well, probably a day, depending on how many wheel seals and stuff I need to do. Um, and maybe it's just a broken spring. You know what, maybe that's why it's sticking or Maybe the cam tubes are dry. Could probably use a good grease job too. So anyways, we'll tackle the back end once we get the front end working. So, um, <sighs> but yeah, that feels good. And my yard is a little neater now. I know. I mean, Smokey's still parked here kind of in the way, um, but not really. Although the weeds grow up underneath it when they're, when you're not moving. Um, it's nice to have the truck not there. <sighs> One day I'd like to build a garage. And you know what I'm thinking? This is what I'm thinking right now. Maybe I see about building a garage next year and move the cars into the garage and then there's more room for trucks. I don't know, or just build another truck shop. But uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's start doing this. This AC works, I'll be amazed. <sighs> there. This is also engine harness to the alternator. Okay, so. Motor mount's not good. I am missing one, well, I'm not missing a motor mount, but the bolt was stuck in it. Maybe I should try and cut it out. Or I'll just buy a new one. Pink. I would have really liked to have sandblasted and painted this a different color, but the overwhelming response was, leave it blue, save your money. So I left it blue, saving our money. Oh. I'll just do that with some black paint though. I think there's some water lines that go to the back that I think I'm going to take off because I don't, I mean, I need sleeper heater lines, so we'll make sure we do that, but I'd also like to replace these with uh, blue lines, if you know what I mean, because I like the blue ones. So it looks like this is heater hose. That got squashed when we pulled the engine out. Um, 
This also got a bit of a squash. This is a ABS wire. So I'll have to fix that. Um, I might wait until I actually get the engine in here to do that in case I hit it again. Hope I don't hit it again, but it could happen. This line, I have no idea. That's a trailer service or something. That was obviously plugged. This is grounder power. I'm gonna have to reference a lot of pictures. This, oh yeah. This is my block heater plug. Yeah, so this is the other heater hose that goes to the back. That would be a good time to do exhaust. Hmm. <laughs> so these are all black rubber lines. Um, I really want to change them with silicone, so I'm going to rip them all out. <clears throat> then, I don't know. And part of me was just thinking, maybe you should just wait and replace them when you replace them in case you want to use a heater, which I do, and I will. <sighs> but, it's in the way is what I'm trying to say. There. Sort of. Like, where was this supposed to go? This is all my battery cables. Power steering, power steering. I'll have to change that one. I think I'll just take that off. Let's tuck this one out there. That, that's good. That's. just water. Of course, <laughs> this thing did blow up. Forget about that. Blue oil everywhere. So one thing I got to make sure is that I get all my connections right for electronics. I might even hook up my uh, jump pack just to make sure which ones of these are ground because I think this is ground. Um, but it's good just to check. Because according to this, I've got a couple. Now that's a ground. So this is an engine ground. Battery ground, two battery powers, two battery grounds, and this plug thingy. And it's all Filthy, dirty. Yuck. So I think I'll get my, um, I'll get my uh, brake clean in here and, uh, you know, clean all these because right now it's easy to clean in here and get it degreased so that when it comes to hooking it up, it's uh, relatively painless. Or at least more painless than it needs to be. If that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Check for rubbed wires. Tear off anything that can be tore off that doesn't need to be there. I should uh, put that heat thingy back on here. I got two broken bolts there to take out. I'll maybe hit those with some uh, WD first or some 
crawl, 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 crawl. I don't actually have any crawl or crawl, whatever it's called. Well, I got my battery lines cleaned up. I made a little bit of a mess on the floor. This is my grease line that I need to get made up because I broke, uh, I broke the end off. So if you know anything about Packard trucks, you can get them with a remote greasing point. So this is for my release bearing that went into the release bearing. Some call it a throw out bearing. Release bearing, throw bearing. Anyways, so I got to get a new line for that and that's for your left, left and right cross, um, cross shafts and your clutch linkage. And it started raining again. You know, this is when a, well, you know, this is when a fella really appreciates having a shop because it was nice. We had blue sky and it'll rain like this for a little bit and then the sun will come out and it'll be nice again. So yeah, if you fellers are thinking about building a shop, just do it. Get a line of credit, borrow the money, build a shop. You won't regret it. Definitely won't regret it. And then you too can fill it up with projects. I was going to say mindless projects, but they're good projects. We just got to get it done projects. So we can move on to the next project so we can do another project. <sighs> okay, guys, I think I'm a bit of a genius. Well, not really. <laughs> I was thinking it would be nice if I could get, you know, the camera so you guys could see what I'm doing like doo doo doo. But the problem with the build mount for GoPro is it's heavy on the hat and they fall over. And then I thought, well, actually I was watching, <laughs> I was watching, um, <clears throat> um, what the heck is it now? Zip ties and bias plies. And he's got a GoPro mount glued to a hat. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I should try that. So this is what I'm gonna do. I bolted, <laughs> put a bolt through my hat and my GoPro, um, has a tripod mount that screws on to a quarter inch bolt. So we're gonna screw it on there and give it a shot. And you guys can tell me if it uh, is good or if it's bad. And you know what? It's Caterpillar hat. Caterpillar hat. A little dirt never hurt. I've had this hat for a long time. So it's probably like a, like, um, I don't know, it's gonna be garbage if this doesn't work. Well, does it work? Can you see me? Is it crooked? I think it is crooked. If I wear it a little crooked, maybe it'll be straight. It's raining a little bit outside. This is a test, but check out the weather now. Hundred percent chance of rain. So anyways, let's get back to it. So, um, I've cleaned up those lines. Now, I got my other motor mount out. There was a bolt bent and stuck in it. It doesn't look great, but we're gonna use it. Um, first, we're gonna throw it down there. Let's try sticking this sucker in. <laughs> okay, let's just stick this in there. Probably gonna need a little little finesse and I didn't bring a hammering device that probably would have been the smart thing to do okay I'll go get a hammering device and the other thing I want to do is I'm going to jack the transmission up because this bolt should be sitting right about here so I got to come up about five inches and over a bit and then what I'm gonna do is I sprayed this off I'm gonna clean it again just because I had sprayed it down with WD-40 while it was outside and then I'm gonna put the clutch in so that when I put the engine in the clutch is already in and I just have to get basically this I only have to go on an inch is what I'm saying basically to get that to go on and it to click in there and then I'll bolt the clutch on through the inspection hole <sighs> it's a little bit harder to do the clutch that way, but uh, it'll be a lot easier than having the clutch on the engine and trying to get this lined up and then slide it on 
when um, you know we're doing this the way we're doing it with the uh, the back hole. So, anyways, ugh, that's what I'm doing. It's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, not as spry as I used to be. Okay, grab a hammer. Maybe I'll grab two hammers. Let's see how this goes. Maybe I could just reach across. Could I just reach across? There! Ha! Motor mount in. So that's one more thing done. You know what? Why don't I put them away in the drawer? I need a light, trouble light. I know, I know. My bench is messy. So let's crawl. Is this going anyways? <laughs> yep, I think yeah, it's working. It's on, whether you guys can see anything is a whole nother story. that is oh probably oil pan heater so I got a big block and I brought some skinny block I'm gonna stick this so it goes right in there to be kind of under the transmission now I know this isn't a transmission jack but I've got this chained so it's not going anywhere well, I don't like that it goes crooked, but it's life, man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the way she goes, man. Will that work? Will it work? But it's got wheels. So worst case scenario, we can give it a little push. Gonna hit that? Yes, it is. <sighs> of course, it's gonna hit that. I got a little block. Let's put the little block on top of that block. Then we'll have a block party. What we want to do is jack it up without wrecking anything. Famous last words. I think that'll work. It's actually going over too, which is good. Shouldn't stick my fingers in there. Mike, Mike, Mike. I wonder if I, I probably have two chains on here maybe. Oh, well, maybe it's just one. I was missing a chain and then it's like, oh wait, <laughs> I know where it is. Looking good. Wow, you think they got enough wire here for the sending unit? <clears throat> oh, I gotta take those hydraulic lines off too. But uh, and I think that's just a little bit more. Okay. Let's give that a go. I don't like how that's wiggly. <laughs> Guess thing about. 24 inch fuel tanks, they're easier to get under. And that is a rogue, a rogue uh, huck bolt. Not sure where it came from. Money. <sighs> so you can see the transmission, it's up the right height on that side, but it's a little, low on this side so i think what it's well obviously what it's doing is it's twisting but i think i'm going to put a little bottle jack underneath the pto because the problem is i mean look where my jack is it's not it's not right under that so okay and the transmission is supported so that's good but let's get a bottle let's get a bottle jack <sighs> Okay. My wire 
Fibers can go there. We're just gonna put that there. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab a block. Oh, hey. I'll have to dig that out. <sighs> That'll work. use a block of wood because steel on steel can slide off but a block of wood helps keep that from happening Now you can see my chain is coming loose on there, which is fine. What the hell was that? <laughs> uh, let's go check. Uh, so it could stand to go that way. And how am I going to do that, he asks. Don't know. The height is just about right, though. You can see my jack is a little bit crooked there. Maybe I can just tap it over with a hammer. I know what you're thinking, Mike. It's dangerous. But I live a life of danger. No, I don't, but... Maybe we'll use a bar. Remember, I left my bar back here. I got an air leak. I wanna fix that before it's out of air. And there's the bar. I forgot. And this is the, the line that's leaking right here. Got a piece of slag that hit it. And I got a quick connect. I think that's a little small though. We're gonna fix that too. <sighs> okay. A new roll of paper out. It's the bounty. Quicker picker upper. Do I know where I set it down? Not really. And I'm thirsty. I need a water. I'm supposed to put this in the fridge. <sighs> okay, where did you put the paper towel, Mike? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I should turn this light on too. Ma! Okay, so we got water. Transmissions almost into place. We just need to tap it over. Yes, you heard that correct. Tap it over. So, although, now this jack isn't doing that much. What if I put a block of wood under that? Just about high enough. It's just got to go over a bit. Maybe we can just try tapping this block. <laughs> Works like a hot dam. Did I just hear a noise? Oh. What's that? Low battery. Look, I got an alarm for the the Super Duty, you know, because they get stolen occasionally. 
So that looks good. Just needs to go up a little more. <laughs> Ow! We need to check this one up. Okay, this I can't do from in here. We're gonna have to go on the outside. But before we do, take my uh, bounty, the quicker picker upper. Maybe I could even try putting this thing in today. <sighs> I should probably wait till I have a hand, but where's the fun in that? Andrew's working till six. Make it nice and clean so it can get full of brake dust. Clean my cross shafts. Everybody likes a clean shaft, cross shaft. There. You know what? I think that's going to be good enough. Well, let's just do this. Put the engine on. I'll put a little bit of just a little bit of never sees or something on there, maybe to guide it in or a little grease in the engine. But if you look, still got to go that way a bit, but I got to jack it up some more. But uh, make sure our linkage is in there. I'll be able to get it that once the engine's in. Not easily, but we'll be able to get at it. These motor mounts could probably be done, but they're not terrible. They're not great, but they're not terrible. They're not loose in there, so we're gonna run it. I'm gonna call that good. So, let's jump out, he says. I think I just have to put the clutch in now. How hard could that be? I know exactly what I need. Ah. It's a snowmobile dolly, but it'll work. If, because this is going to go, pull that off, like that. There. Now it's a little bit lighter for me to give it the old grunta, <sighs> the old grunty grew. I'm told this clutch isn't that old, so, so that's good. Okay. <clears throat> Piece of cake. Let's go. That spins. <sighs> Butter. <sighs> so that's hooked up. And then this was 180 degrees.
<sighs> of course, I put my brake clean up there. <sighs> it's very interesting. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> and then I got that one left to go on there. But let's wipe my greasy paw prints off. <sighs> Just gotta grab it right there. <sighs> okay. guys are probably wondering, Mike, why don't you put a new clutch on? Well, I'm told this clutch isn't that old, and why spend money if it's good? Even if it's good enough. Like, you put a new clutch on and throw out one that might be good for another five, 6,000 hours, so. <sighs> so, and this is, we're on a budget. We're on a budget is what I'm saying. But, um, you know, I can tidy these up. Well, I guess I could do this right now. Um, I was gonna say I could tidy these up after, but really all I did was I pulled the plastic sheathing off just to degrease them. Cause these being on the bottom of the engine get, well, <laughs> oily from all the whatever leaks you might have. So let's just put these back on and, and we're good for business. Like that. This can go there. So now these can stay there. I'll tie these up once the engine's in because I'm going to have to get it to uh, the underside for the bolts. <coughs> um, so we're gonna leave that like that. This side's nice and easy. Um, I'll have to hook up the clutch linkage, but I think I'll wait till it's in there just to be on the safe side. And this is a water line going to your sleeper. I'll leave that for now. I can do that once it's in the truck. That's the block heater oil line to your head. And uh, yeah, I think that's, I don't know what that goes to. This might go to your power steering pump or fuel. Might go to fuel, something like that. It goes somewhere. So I think we're ready boys, at least on this end. Uh, so you have to let me know how this hat uh, hat cam works. If it works, we'll do more of it, obviously. But um, I'm gonna get a little sweaty. But look, oh. but look at that. It's pretty centered. So you know what? I think I just got to get the engine in there. And my plan is to kind of get the engine sitting on the motor mounts and then either shimmy the engine or shimmy the transmission to get it to, to sync up. Um, you know, get the engine sitting down, get the transmission so that it's in the right height, and then uh, just pry the engine back or the transmission forward and, you know, it sounds easy. So now we just have to uh, figure out how to lift this bad boy up in the air. Um, yeah. I thought about using straps, but I gotta be careful not to wreck anything. Take my plastic bag off. Um, it's okay, it was just the jack moving. <sighs> now I could use 
head bolts, but I don't have a bracket or I make a bracket to do it. One from each side where you grab a, I wonder if work has a, has a bracket that I could bolt in here to just lift the center up. But how does this look? Oh yeah, not great. I should have fixed that mic. So, not sure how to do that yet. And I'm gonna quit using this because it's got paint on it and I don't want the paint to come off the plastic, go into the engine. Although we still have to give it a little clean, one last clean before it goes together. I'm gonna try something here. This is the heat shield that pulled off the fabric on the firewall. I'm gonna clean it with some brake clean. I think I'll call that good. I think that's the, yeah, that was the, the front side. And then we're gonna use some contact cement for my upholstery. Oh, I love these. High strength spray adhesive. Heat and moisture resistant. Well, that's good. Directions. Um, spray tip, blah, blah. Spray both surfaces to be bonded. Allow adhesive to dry a minimum of one minute. Make bond while still, still, still tacky. Clean spray tip with turpentine. Okay. God hates a coward. Okay, Mike, just figure it out. There. Just have a ball in it? I don't know. Just shake it. Shake it real good. Dun, mm -mm. Sorry. Smells kind of good. Let's do this one now. Let dry one minute. Clean up my messes. Look at that. Stuff tacks up quick. See I'm down a little bit, but it's good. This one, this one's not ready yet, but close enough. I want to fix this air leak because it's kind of driving me nuts. I go into my fitting drawer. This looks like it could be it. Yep. <clears throat> there. 
Now I'm gonna air the truck up to see, um, to see if that did it. Much better. Now I should take all this stuff off too. Whew, but I'd like to get the engine in first. happened exactly almost how I wanted it to.
Do you think you could hold this? So I can put blocks under it?
have a look. Looking good. So I can go down. Down and then back a bit. Well, it's in. The front holes line up. The back holes still have to be uh, straightened out. They're very close. The transmission is almost perfect. So I think we can bar 
barred around for the rest of it. Mm. Take my chains off. Not recommended procedure, but Like a glove. Battery died. Oh, guys, I got the transmission done up. I got the transmission bolted in. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see no jack under there. There's no chain. I also, I also got the clutch done up. That wasn't, you know what? I'm really, really, really glad I did it this way. Because being that there's no, um, cylinders in it for rotating um, the uh, the engine over to do up the bolts and the clutch, it was really easy. Like my journey tool is right down there. So the nice thing was I could turn it and once I got one started, the rest were a breeze. <laughs> it took me a little bit to get the first one started. It's always a little tricky, but, um, but yeah, so happy. Clutch is done up. Transmission is done up to the engine. My front motor mounts line up perfectly. My back ones, my back ones don't. So I'm gonna have to uh, fart with this another day. I don't know if you can see that, but, uh, but I'm about half an inch off. So I gotta pull the engine and transmission a half an inch back. I might even use a come along because now they're bolted together as a unit. So I could just grab onto the yoke on the back of the transmission, just suck it up a bit, just. Oh, feels so good. So now start taking those parts and put back on here, which uh, really isn't that much. This, well, actually, pardon me, I've got the head and I've got two heads. So I think I'm going to use the head that was on it, clean it up, put it on. Um, and I'm going to save that head because if I have a problem with my head down the road, I can have another head. And it's always good, you know, to have two heads because, you know, they say two heads are better than one. <laughs> I know. How about, I, Anyways, um, if you're wondering why the floor is wet, I did a really stupid thing. I know, you're surprised. You're like, Mike, do something stupid? Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you guys. Uh, sometimes I do do stupid stuff. So <laughs> this is Duke's engine. It's on the block, on the, pardon me, it's on a tire. It's not on the block. The block's on a tire. Um, I'm going to pull the bell housing off. Pull any part that's usable out of this block. And I'm even going to take my busted piston out for a keepsake. Um, but when I was pushing it with a bucket and look at the, look at the weather right now, like now it's sunny and nice, but um, I, uh, the tractor was outside and I was pushing around and then to back up in here to push it over, I had to tip the bucket. Well, apparently the bucket was full of water. So I dumped a bucket full of water on that engine. Luckily not on the head, but it made a little bit of a mess and that's, that's a blown up engine, but that was, that was my, Stupid did 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 but uh, yeah, look at this guys. Just looks fantastic. Now I can pull this tape off. Oh yeah, that's so satisfying. Ah, oh, I can hook up this fuel line, which I'm not sure where it is, and I can hook up my power steering stuff. And that's the beauty of this. You know, without the head on. You know, even doing up the transmission and everything on the back of the engine is so easy. Um, I wouldn't say, well, it's so easy to get to. Because when this is done, the engine's gonna sit up about here. We're gonna have our big turbos off there. I should change that uh, chunk of flex pipe because that's not great. But um, I'm gonna do everything on the lower half of the engine to, uh, to get it ready before I put the head on because then that way it's just, easier to to work on it but uh look at what i used for a cover cardboard <laughs> cummins <laughs> thanks cummins but um anyways that's it for this episode guys thanks for watching duke has an engine still doesn't run but it doesn't have a hole in it or at least it doesn't have a hole where it's not supposed to have a hole so thanks for watching guys greatly appreciate it we'll catch you in the next one cheers peace later
Get it! Urk. All right. I should move some of this stuff. Nah. Instead, I'm gonna go in and have a burger. I'm gonna go in and have a burger. Burger night. And I don't know if I'm dirty. I wonder if I'm dirty. Can I see my face? Yeah, I'm a little dirty. What do you do? Kind of cool having that. I'm gonna put some more license plates there because then I see everybody's plates before I uh, when I shut the lights off. And I got it. Oh, before I forget, guys. How? What did you think of hat cam? <laughs> There's my little mount. Uh, and uh, you know what? I just wear the hat like this. And then I can, yeah. So anyways, I hope that turned out. Because if it did, I'll do it more often. Maybe I'll do it while I'm driving. Probably be nicer. And that way I don't have to have quite so many mounts. But um, yeah. Guys, I always got to have multiple mounts. And I got to sweep the floor. Look at all this stuff. Some of it's good stuff. Some of it's garbage. Scrap steel, they said. Huh.